1027 Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever Edmonton Alberta Canada Thank you for the Baxter good evening friends this is a grand privilege to be here tonight in Edmonton after having a great revival here a few years ago it's always been my heart's desire to get back to my lovely friends at Edmonton I appreciated your letters just since I have been gone and all that you have done in praying for me and the success of God's work and we thought it would be very nice tonight if we could stop over and share the blessings of God with you for this one night wish we could stay longer have to hurry right home have to leave at two o'clock in the morning and to be going to hurry right back again for another service and it's been a constant go since we have left here and the Lord has been good to us to help us minister to his people I'm thankful for this bunch of ministers here on the platform tonight and many others of the groups that's represented here you are all very dear to me you are God's children I've always known this and I found this in my life of ministry if you want to serve God serve his people that's how we serve as we love one another we love God and I love his people and I'm doing all that I know how to try to represent our Lord Jesus Christ to them in a way of his divine mercies and his powers that he has given to the church in this last day now I was very much carried away with brother Baxter's talk tonight that's the first time in since he's been managing the meetings that I've ever sat on the platform and heard him speak the first time in years that I've known Brother Baxter, about five years, it's always in the meetings that I'm out praying and getting ready, seeking God and praying and fasting before the meetings. That's usually the procedure. We I never get into the meetings until the time to come right in under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and go right into praying for the sick. And I certainly like the way he's presented that. And that's the way that I've always tried to represent it to the people. But many magazines and so forth has represented me as a divine healer and so forth. But friends, that's wrong. I'm your brother. I'm no divine healer. I'm just one of you. If you will let me be. God be blessed for bringing me into your fold. There's many men in here sitting near by me. Who was preach probably preaching the gospel when I was a baby. And I feel very humble to be standing here tonight before ministers who are aged and preached the word so long who paved the road and made it easy for me to come. What if they didn't have preached divine healing before this age was manifested? Then they would I'd have had an awful road to go. But my, by their help and why they have stood for, I'm coming confirmation of what they preached. And I'm very grateful to those brothers, thinking that sometime when life is all over and the last prayer is said when here on earth and the Bible closed and we come down to the end of the road, enter into his joys up there. And I just wonder when that great supper is set, the last supper, down along the lines of thousands of miles, we sat across the table from each other. I tell you, that's going to be a glorious time, isn't it? We look across the table to one another and see those veterans who fought to win the prize and sailed through bad seas. I guess we'll shake each other's hand and no doubt a little tear will drop down our cheeks, but the king will come out and wipe the tears away from our eyes and say, don't cry. It's all over now. We are home. And that's what I look forward to, friends, for that day. I tried under opposition, of course, many times to represent Jesus Christ as a healer. Well, I'm just being misunderstood. People call me the healer, but I couldn't heal no one. And neither is anyone on earth can heal anyone. Healing only lays in Jesus Christ. See? See? Here recently, I was reading an article in the paper to see, and that's what causes many people, no doubt this fundamentalist and so forth, sitting here tonight, I was raised, brought up, ordained in a fundamentalist church, you know. Um, I was a Baptist, but here's many times here's what causes them to criticize on the full gospel people. An article was read in the paper here not long ago to a man that said, the Lord give me the gift of divine healing, said he come down in the room and pick me up and put me up before his throne and set me down, he said, son, he said, I'm giving you the gift of divine healing. Quickly, that's wrong. There's no such a thing as a gift of divine healing. There's no such a thing in the scripture. And 
He said, I'm giving you power to open blind eyes, to unstop deaf ears, to cast out demons, to make the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, and come back to earth, and so forth, and do this. Now, I'm not here to say that God didn't do that thing. God can do what he wants to. I can't tell him what to do, but if he did that, he certainly has got his word mixed up, and he certainly taken it away from Jesus Christ if he gave it to the man. If he, if you bought me a suit of clothes, and the purchasing price of that suit of clothes was $50, and you give me $50, it's not yours anymore, it's mine, see? And if he give me power to open the blinded eyes, to unstop deaf ears, it doesn't belong in Calvary no more, it belongs to me. I do what now? That might be all right. God might have said he did that now. The thing I want to see it do, I want to see it work. That's um, then I'll believe it when I it works. That's God in His Scripture. We try to s stay strictly the Bible, and that's the only foundation that I know, friends. Is that is God's word, and as long as it's based upon God's word, then God will be behind it and confirm His word. See. And as far as divine healing, as soon as a baby come in, cause the spirit of discernment, you understand, many things, many have been in the meetings, know what it was. The boy come in, I seen him come up to the Mr. Baxter there. The boy is um, going to die right away if God doesn't help him. He has cancer. And he went down and talked to the boy. And he come back, said, that's exactly right, see? It's uh, that's knowing the thing that's different that doesn't heal people. As many of you has been in the meetings this week at Grand Prairie, you see sin and things so forth, which is revealed and told to people. Why? That cannot be hid. Now, see, that's see that's a divine gift. But healing is in Calvary. Sin is your faith there. Now, a gift of healing doesn't mean that man heals somebody. It means the man has got faith in divine healing that can point them to the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. How many that has been saved in the last 10 years, let's see your hand, been saved the last 10 years. Now, I don't want to differ with you, but you wasn't saved in the last 10 years. You were saved 1900 years ago, and you accepted it in the last 10 years. Is that right? That's right. See, you were saved 1900 years ago when Jesus Christ paid the purchase praise for the sins of the world. Is that right? At Calvary. And he was wounded for transgressions with his stripes. We were healed. 1900 years ago. Therefore, every person in this building tonight that's sick has been healed since 1900 years ago when Jesus died. That's where God did everything that he could do for the human race. He did it in Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Now, the only thing that a divine gift can do is to stir your faith to that. Ministers preach the gospel, which is just as good as anything else, could be done better if a person can just take God at his word and see the work finished there at Calvary, and accept it in their own life. That settles it right there. That's all. All is necessary. Then God in his goodness, after that, has been sent gifts beside that into the church to manifest his love and his promises to the people. See what I mean? But every individual must look to Calvary. There is where it comes from. Is Calvary. Now, It's just like this. God put the blood of Jesus Christ in a deposit box at Calvary to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases and give every believer a checkbook with his name signed on the bottom of it. The only thing you have to do is fill out the check and send it in for any redemptive blessings that Jesus Christ died for. You believe that? Don't be afraid. If John D. Rockefeller would offer me a check tonight to build a new church for a million dollars, I wouldn't be afraid to fill it out. No, sir, because I believe John D. Rockefeller is worth it. And if Jesus Christ offered me a check tonight too for my sickness that he healed me at Calvary, I'm not afraid to fill it out and hand it in there. Go testify that God has healed me no matter what the result is. I believe Jesus told the truth, see? That's where it comes from. It's what you believe, your attitude towards Jesus. Look at St. Mark 11.24. Jesus said, Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it. That's the order of the word now. Believe now you receive it. It shall be given unto you. Is that right? You shall have whatever you have asked for if you believe it. And now, he, if Jesus paid for it there, why? I believe it. I accept it. I, 
believe it and go testifying God has brought the how many people believe that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself that's all the great powers that the father had was given all the powers of the father but when he met Satan watch where he brought it to for the weakest Christian here tonight he never used any of his divine gifts when Satan came to him and said if thou be the son of God command the stones with made bread Jesus said it is written the word of God it is written man shall not live by bread alone again he was tested and Jesus said it is written and a third time he was tested and Jesus said it is written is that right right to the word of God showing that the weakest Christian can defeat Satan by it is written if you believe the word of God teaches it believe it accept it and hang on to it God will bring it to pass don't you believe that it is written now remember this that I make this quotation that the word of God will defeat Satan anywhere, anytime, any place, and in any condition. The word of God alone is written, will defeat Satan no matter who he is, what form he comes in, where he's at, it will defeat Satan. Now that is truth, the written word of God. Now, and now here's another statement I want you to remember, and you especially hear that so sick setting here these cancer cases and so forth tonight look that the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of god will bring it to pass can you understand what i mean the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of god will bring it to pass if you take the right mental attitude towards anything god has promised god's an obligation to see that you get it that's right because he promised it now, many times people misunderstand the meetings in this manner. Since I've been with you, there's been many, many things that happened. As you've probably kept up with it through the newspapers and so forth. By the way, did you read the reader, the writer, the Reader's Digest this month on the article was in there about my services in California and they had it in street. I told the man when he came down and he said there that I didn't ask nothing but told the boy what was wrong with it and that's just with the medical help if they be careful the boy would get over that and he did the boy died later but not with the disease there's a nurse had let a window up and they had a draft across him and the child taken pneumonia and died but not with the disease see now when god is an obligation to his word now he has what takes place friends now in the coming meetings in june if god willing i'd like to come in first come to we'll have plenty of time our meeting has always been too rushed and across the nations we found it so i guess since we have been here our by god's grace and his we've led to jesus christ right in our own meetings around three hundred and fifty thousand souls to christ in the past five or six years in one day alone in south africa thirty thousand raw heathens come to jesus christ in one single meeting in one day thirty thousand raw heathens when they see the manifestation of the spirit of god given where the witch doctors and everything else trying to find out what they could and found that they were couldn't stand before it and give up and surrender themselves to god and was 30,000 in one day received Jesus Christ and breaking the idols, washing their face from uh, Mohammedism and so forth, and become Christians in one day. After seeing a man walked on his feet, hands and feet like a dog, I said, Of course, I can't heal the man. No one knows that, or I mean, everybody knows that, that I can't heal the man. But now his life cannot be hid. Now, I want you to understand this, Christian friend. So I'll give you a little preview. How many here is to be prayed for? Let's see your hands. Want to be prayed for? Now, anywhere in the building, just raise up your hand. I want to see your hand. Oh my, it will be almost help hopelessly end, but I'll pray for you. If that's you see. But I want you to notice this. How many has been in the meetings and sees the way the Holy Spirit moves and works with the people? Let's see your hand. How he tells them what they have done and the reason that they can't be healed and they have to go and make those things right and some things they have done in their life and so forth you've seen it in the meetings it's um that's uh it now people sometimes wonder that's what makes them get a superstition about the ministry that the lord has given i just want to ask you one simple question and then you'd be the judge yourself now how many in this building believe that jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever 
All right, thank you for your confidence in our Lord. Now, if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll have to have some conception of what he is and his work is in order to see who he is. Is that right? We'd have to have to know something the way he did. Now, let's trace back just a little bit through his life and see what he did. When he was on earth, and the Bible said he made himself no reputation, yet he was the creator. The man who made your false teeth, he got a reputation for doing that. The man who made them fast had no reputation. The man who made an artificial arm made himself a reputation, but the man who made your real arm made his of himself no reputation. Is that right? Now, he may, he was a humble man, and here he didn't claim to be anything of within himself. He gave all praise to the Father, God. Is that right? Now we notice when his ministry started. Now I want you to watch his ministry. When his ministry started, they began to realize that there was something supernatural about the man. The Pharisees of Brother Baxter just got through saying they could not figure it out. He knew the people. He knew their thoughts. He knew their hearts. He knew what was going on. And they said, well, now, perhaps it's mental telepathy or psychology. And after a while, they seen the miracles and things that followed his ministry. Psychology won't do. Mental telepathy won't produce. So then the only thing they could do, they couldn't figure it out. So they branded it in their own brand, is the devil. He's a chief fortune teller of the church bunch. He's built a verb and send him away. Now, notice, now, there was a man named Philip who got saved and went to find his friend Nathaniel, and he said, Come see who have found Jesus of Nazareth, the one that Moses spoke of. Now watch there closely now. And Nathaniel, a good man, he said, Could any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, Come see. And when he was coming, Jesus standing in the prayer line, perhaps praying for the sick or whatever he was doing, and when he seen Nathaniel coming up, he said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And it astonished the Israelite, and he said, Whence knowest thou me, Rabbi, Reverend, Elder, Teacher, whatever we should call? He said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Is that right? Now, Nathaniel didn't try to say, Now, he's reading my mind, he's doing. He said, He's the Son of God, the King of Israel. A woman one time at the well, he said he had need to go by Samaria. And when a woman, probably a prostitute, he came out to the wells about 11 o'clock when he sent the disciples away for bread. Now watch this. He said to her, bring me a drink, just to get a conversation. She said, well, it's not customary for the Jews to ask Samaritan such. They have no dealings. You know the story. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink, and I'd give you water you didn't come here to drink. She said, the well is deep and so forth. He, when he was he trying to do, he was hunting her spirit. And as soon as he got in that dimension of where her spirit was, he said, go get your husband right straight to her trouble. She said, I have no husband. He said, you've said well, for you have had five, and the one that you have now is not your husband. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She ran to the city and told the people to come and see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Now watch what kind of a man we're talking about. Here he comes to the pool of Bethsaida, where great multitudes, if I'm taught right, one multitude consists of over 2,000. And if there's multitudes, there's perhaps 10,000 people laying there. Now watch it, St. John 5. Look at the conditions of these people. They were lame, halt, blind, wither, twisted, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel came down in, into the pool at a certain season, and whosoever stepping in first was healed by whatsoever disease they had. And here come Jesus. Now, watch this lovely one. Do you believe he loved the people? He believed he was a son of God. He was full of compassion, loved the people with all of his heart. Sure he did now. He, here he come, full of love, suffering humanity. Oh, how he loved them. Here he comes down to this great uh, pool where he, this great mass of people is. Now he always had compassion upon the people, but he moved right down. Here stands an old dad, perhaps standing there, twisted with arthritis, saying, Somebody help me in the pool. And a lovely Jesus passes right by him. Here stands a mother with a baby with a water head, perhaps. Oh, somebody help me to get in the pool fast with my darling baby. Jesus passes right by her. Here is a man they had to carry. 
he was crippled and lame. Somebody helped me in the pool. He passed right by. He's a blind man. Oh, have mercy on me. I've been blind for years. Somebody helped me in the pool where the water was troubled. Thousands of them. Jesus passed right by every one of them and went over to a man that had an infirmity for 30 and 8 years, sugar diabetes or TB or something. The man couldn't walk. Could walk. He said, when I'm coming to the pool, another steps ahead of me. Is that true? I read St. John 5 and see if it isn't. That's right now. Nobody doubts that what St. John 5 is inspired, you see. Now, he walked right by every one of those cripples, walked right along and knew that the man had been in the, this condition 38 years. And he said, would you be made whole? And he healed the man that had been laying there with the, all this affliction, all this disease, and walked right away from that multitude and left them poor old mothers and daddies and babies and all of them laying there, lame, halt, blind, twisted, waiting for the moving of the water. How cool a loving savior. How could a man with a heart full of compassion for the sick, how could the son of God walk by such massive mass of humanity, twisted and lame, and we are even taught by historians that they stabbed one another trying to get into the pool first. How could a loving Savior, full of love and compassion, walk by such a multitude and leave them lay there and make one man whole? That uh, we'll just say, for instance, he had sugar diabetes. How could he do that? The Jews was questioning him a little later. <laughs> read down on down, read the chapter, and you'll find out when they were in question about him on the Sabbath and so forth, listen what he said, St. John 5, 19 and 20, very, very, I say unto you, the Son could nothing of himself, but what is his Father doing? Whatsoever the Father doeth, he showeth the Son, and these things doeth the Son also. He, he'll show you greater things than the healing of the diabetic that you may marvel. Jesus plainly stated that there wasn't one thing that he did without first he saw the Father doing it. Is that right? Then he took on himself, you see, he gave all credit to the Spirit, God, see, and that's the reason he passed by watch, he knew the man. Watch the re resurrection of Lazarus, when he had said, when Mary and them sent for him to pray for Lazarus, he went away. The father had showed him a vision, what was going to happen, and then, when he said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, they said, Is if he sleepeth, he doeth well. He said he's dead, and for your sake I'm glad I wasn't there, but I go wake him. Look at him at the grave, Father. I said not this because thou hearest me always, he said, but I said it because these that stand by God had showed him a vision of what was going to happen. According to the Bible and Jesus' own words, he did not do one thing without first the Father showing him by a vision what to do. Is that right? How many believe that's true now? Read it, St. John 19. Or St. John 5, 19 and 20, you'll see it. Jesus said, I can do nothing with myself but what I see the Father doing, that I do also. Then if Jesus Christ, he said, the things that I do shall you do also. A little while and the world seeth me no more, yet you'll see me, the church, the believer, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world, making Jesus Christ as in yesterday to the end forever. Then... If his spirit is with us tonight and with the church in this day, that same spirit that was upon Jesus Christ will be doing the same thing today that he did yesterday because it's Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? The world misunderstood it. The world called it psychology. The world called it the chief of devils. But the world will always call it that. But the church knowed him to be the son of God, you see. What I mean, that's the reason that people misunderstand theological teachings and so forth, they get their book of rules and get them out and look them over and say this is the way it's supposed to be, this and that, but it don't make any difference what man says, it's what God says about it. And then if God confirms that to be the truth, then we believe God is truth. Is that right? The Lord bless you Christian friends. I want to start and pray. The only way I know to do is to let Brother Baxter stand up here or some other man at this place and just line them up as they possibly can, come through the line and I'll pray for you as many people as I can. I love you. There'll be people when I come next June the setting here that won't be here then in a mass of people here. They said the hall will sit about 17 or 18 hundred. There's probably two or three hundred standing close to 2,000 people. Then 
are in the meeting in a group of like this, some of the young people perhaps may be killed in accidents, some of them may be shaken down, killed, the older people, many of them, their days are about finished, and they'll be gone. These people here that will I'll never see no more until I see you at the judgment seat of Christ. That's right. But when I stand there as I did five years ago, standing here at Monton, I say again tonight, I'm not ashamed of my testimony because Jesus Christ has confirmed it around the world now and they know it everywhere. That is true. Now, that's because that the angel of the Lord had his picture taken. How many seen that in there? The picture of it too. You mean there's no other no one here, just about one man that's ever seen that picture that was taken only in the United States and sitting in Washington DC tonight, the only supernatural being the claim was ever photographed in all of the world. And they have a copyright up there. You've never seen it. Well, that was in a discussion at Houston, Texas, when it was taken. Now we'll get back to June, in June now, to you sick people, buddy, my brother, you sitting there dying with cancer, and many others here in the building suffering likewise, heart trouble and so forth, I ask you this tonight as your brother who loves you and realizing that my life may be taken way before any, any of yours, I don't know, only God knows, but here, if you will believe this, I say this with my Bible, and here's how, how much I believe. I believe this is with all of my heart, knowing that I'm talking to the patches of the blood of Christ. God sent me into the world to pray for sick people. As he sent other men to preach the gospel and so forth, I was to pray for sick people as the angel of the Lord spoke it. I don't have to. You don't have to question that no more. That's confirmed among as many as 10 million people tonight, seeing, And that's the truth. Kings, potentates, monarchs, congressmen. How many had the healing of Congressman Upshaw in the United States? 66 years, an invalid, made perfectly whole. I was just standing there in the vision, saw what taking place, and he was healed and made perfectly whole. Now, if you believe tonight, if I'll step down here and pray for you, and when you come through, it isn't my prayer, friends. That is an it, see? What I'm trying to get you to do when you come through is believe that Jesus Christ healed you and has sent us to pray for you, that you might get well. And how many people in this building tonight that was healed in the meeting when I was here before that still healed tonight? Let's see your hands. How many in here was healed in the meeting? Look here. Just look over the building there. 30, 40, 50 hands from that meeting from that's been healed. That's five years ago. Young man, in five years from tonight, wouldn't you like to be raising your hand saying you was the one that was healed at that time? Look, I want to say something to you. There was some lepers set at the gate one time at Samaria, when it was besieged by the Syrians, they said, why do we sit here till we die? They were starving to death. They were eating one another's children in the city. They said, if we sit here, we die. If we go in the city, we die. Then if the only hope we have is to go down to the Samaritans, if they save us, we live. But if they kill us, we die. Whatever, we are going to die anyhow. So let's take a chance of going down. You know the story. And they never only saved themselves, but God rewarded them with that faith until they saved the whole city of Samaria. Now, you are sitting in the same place that they sat. Many of you along here in the, this cripples and afflictions, laying on the squats and things here, seen, you're in the same place. You're not expected to go to the camp of the enemy, but you're invited to go to the home of your father tonight to come and believe with a Christ with a bloody atonement laying there before the Father tonight to make a good your confession in Him. Jesus says at the right hand of God to make intercessions upon your confession. You've got to accept it and confess it to its soul to make it an act of faith. If you'll do that, if you, the doctor has done all he can do. Everyone else has done all they can do. You too, sister, and you too, young man, and you, you. All that can be done is already done. There's nothing can be done out in medical aid. Well, if they have done all they can do, then there's only one hope left for you, and that's in Jesus Christ. Take it. Believe it. Hold on to it. Say, God, if others can, I can too. And you are my God, the same as you were theirs. And my brother, you look like a healthy man tonight. And uh, God, my judge... 
of the people that have uh, seen our father heal so far beyond till you look like an athlete by the side of some of them that's been healed. How many seen the picture of Florence Nightingale? It was yonder in London, England, when she only weighed about 37 pounds. She couldn't even move her hand or nothing. Cancer on the duodem of the stomach. And while standing there praying for her, a little dove flew in, sat down on the window, and began to go back and forth, cooling. When I raised up, the ministers began to say, Did you see the dove? I said, I started to see, I see the dove. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said, Thus saith the Lord, she'll live and not die. And she weighs 155 pounds in perfect health, see? Now, when the God that saved Florence Nightingale, the great-granddaughter of the late Florence Nightingale, the founder of the Red Cross, can save your life tonight, can save your life tonight, yours, yours, and many of the rest of you out through this building. Believe it, will you? Ministers of God, as children of God, stand with me. This is a... I've just come in from being away, and it's, I just, there's so many here to be prayed for. I want to pray for everyone that I can. Brother Baxter, when I walk down through here to pray for the sick, will you have the people to line up? I believe they can come. Let his aisle come this way, and then have the upstairs, you just arrange it. Brother Baxter speaks for three minutes and making an announcement about moving cars and exhaust the people concerning divine healing and assemblies, the prayer line. But prayer by the Baxter while we can we have prayer while we while by the Baxter is forming this line or they're forming the line dear Christian friends I trust that your faith it goes up now to God that many things may be did here tonight and don't just come for that purpose but come believing now whatever it tells you to do you do it and if it speaks no matter what it says you go ahead and just do what it said now I'll be responsible for the outcome of it. I'm just going to start praying for the sick. Get ready, and then Brother Baxter speaks. What time is closing time down here? About 10 o'clock. Yes, now. Brother Baxter speaks. I have any father thinking just now of a lovely one coming down to the mountain. A father brought a boy and said, Lord, he's variously vexed with the devil. He falls in the fire and in the water, realizing today that we would call it epilepsy. Nothing seemed to be able to do him any good. Jesus said, Do you believe? Said, I can if you believe. For all things are possible to them that believe. All this music is now sweeping out, and here's a people I'm thinking of a good friend, Paul Rader, the writer. All things are possible to them that believe. Now, here is people that's dying, Lord, realizing that before God, we have to answer for our deeds that's done in this body. In this hurry up rush time, the hour is getting late. Many, as we pass through in the line, may they get healed. Lord, everyone, grant just now that the angel of God may come near and may he bless everyone that's been prayed for and will be prayed for. For he said, whatever you bind on earth, I bind in heaven. What you lose on earth, I lose in heaven. Grant, Lord, that those things might be said and done tonight and there might be a great result from this meeting and we'll have it to leave it to you, Father. And seemingly, there's a lovely spirit among the people ready for revival. Then, Lord, grant this as a go light for us as it was. We'll return back then if it is your will for a great revival where we can take time one by one, pray for many hundreds and thousands of people that is in need here in Western Canada. Just now, may the Holy Spirit come near and respect the prayer of your servant. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Basta speaks. Brother Brown prays for the people. Many of his words are indiscernible. That's the man. Just keep and also it's for it's just the time of life. You're just here not long ago. I pray that you heal. Brother Basta speaks and leads the congregation in saying, I believe. For you're the same. We believe coming to. Let me see you. I don't know why, brother. What you are, he'll have to. Told you, God's here to make you him well. Thou who can foretell and know his life, which was surely can tell him what will be hereafter. Almighty God, author of life, send thy blessings upon this man, who I bless in thy name, and may the sickness of his body tonight be taken from him, and may he go and be a well man from this hour on. 
may he be able to eat and to live without fear and be a man like his used to be father and be healed and well in the name of thy son jesus christ i ask this blessing amen now just a moment my brother i just uh, want to speak to you just a moment now you look right at me now when you come here a moment ago i never seen you in my life knowing nothing about you you know that is true isn't it i never seen you but here the holy spirit tells you what's wrong what you have done and how it all acted is that right if that's right raise up your hand so we now without knowing you or anything now you believe me to be his prophet tonight if you believe that the spirit of the lord jesus christ who knowed where what the woman had done at the well he knowed what where a man was under the tree praying when he just told you just now what you done a few days ago at your room isn't that right told you just what you are doing and everything the brother says that's it that's right all right now if that be so then if i be the god's servant i know what will be is that right now you go home you just eat what you want to god has healed you and you're going to be a well man and every ailment that's been named in your body is going to be well now do you believe that now the god that could show what was certainly knows what will be is that right now you're healed the lord bless you go home and be well in the name of the lord jesus let's just say thanks be to god everyone if you will see the lord jesus is here to make well and to heal now you see the man I knew not, but the Holy Spirit comes here and tells him what is trouble that he'd been doing. What he was doing the day before yesterday at a certain place, at a certain time, revealed all those things to him. Tell him what it was as you picked it up right here at the microphone goes along now. I had prayer for him. Now, it was just like looking to me, as I might explain it, it's like looking on something. The man faded away and got real little and seen him as a little boy and just watched down along like that through life and then it moved away when i had prayer i didn't know what would happen i just asked our heavenly father he told him about his conditions he's got a process trouble that's caused him to have a numbers disorder and he also it causes him to get up at night told him about going to the bath you who live in the ne his neighborhood see if that isn't right now see if that isn't now he's here now christians there isn't a person in this building but what that would happen to but if we take each patient like that you know about how long we'll be here about three weeks to get through the people that's here to be prayed for through now how many believe with all your heart say i believe brother Branham, you told the truth and god confirmed it you believe it now all right now i wonder if you christians would join with me in prayer while this entire audience joins in prayer while i pray and some of the ministers here that's uh, along the line also lay your hand on the sick the bible said this sign shall follow them that believe see in my name they shall cast out devils and so forth if the holy spirit should stop on something or another it will be glad to do it but i won't be able to get the people prayed for unless i start praying for them and of course i catch the person's eyes it starts right into the discernment of course immediately as soon as the person comes up and now i want you to pray with me and how many up there will pledge that you'll pray all over the building while we are praying and singing only believe will you pray you raise your hand and will you people along the line believe if you just ask god god will do it do you believe it raise up your hands if you do all right when you now bow your head while we have prayer all right now my pastor speaks for five minutes and leads in singing i need thee every hour a woman who's suffering here from this blindness may the spirit come upon her tonight and heal her father i pray through jesus christ's name the name of the son jesus amen have faith sister i pray father that she'll heal her she's has a may she go and be well to just by his name lord god i pray for this in the name of the lord jesus that you heal our sister may she go tonight and be made whole to just Christ's his name don't doubt but believe god be merciful to our brother I ask in the name of the lord jesus christ that you heal him and make him well grant it father to just Christ's his name amen god bless you god bless brother baxter speaks god bless you now go serve the lord with all of your heart lord jesus i pray for this woman that you'll heal her grant that your blessings come upon her and she'll be made well through jesus christ's name amen look lady 
Don't fear no more. Go believe it now. In the name of the Lord, Brother Baxter speaks. I just want to say there are so many people passing through here that suffering with mental op oppression, demon manifestation, but oppression, Satan. I seen a vision break before me of a young lady. She went back there and sat down a few minutes ago that thinks she crossed the separating line. Don't let Satan tell you that. As long as you love God, God still loves you. It has to be a creator to create a cre that creation in your heart to make you love God. Don't believe that. See, go believe with all of your heart that Christ loves you. Suffer the same thing, Lord, as I pray that you'll make her well. May she go tonight healed. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, just go thanking God and you'll get well, sister. Father, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well as I lay hands on her. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Dear Lord, I pray that you, our sister, that you heal and make her well in the name of the Son, Jesus, amen. God bless your sister, Lord God, creator of heaven and earth. Send the blessings upon our sister and heal her in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, amen. God bless your sister. The Bible said this sign shall follow them that believe. Think now that you'll get there. All right. All right, sure. Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister. May she go from here tonight and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God bless your sister. My brother speaks, heal our brother. That you'll, God, I pray that you heal our brother from this. I ask it in the name of the Son. Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, brother. I pray, Father, that you will heal our brother from this tonight in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, as his blessing, amen. Lord, I pray that you will heal our sister and make her well through Jesus Christ's name. I pray, amen. God, I pray that you will heal our brother and make him well through Jesus Christ's name. I ask it, amen. God bless you, brother. Something happened to you. Your deafness has left you. <sighs> Sir, can you hear me? All right. Go perfectly normal. And you're healed. That's right. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll bless our brother and make him and heal him, make him well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, brother. God, I pray that you'll bless this brother and make him well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he shall receive his healing. Amen. Lord God, I pray that you'll heal, bless our brother and heal him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless, I pray. God, I bless my sister in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. I ask for her healing. God bless us, you, sister. Father, bless our sister who are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will bless our brother, Lord, crippled up here, walking in the cane. May he be healed tonight, make him a blessing, Lord, and a testimony as I ask that he believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You believe, my brother, put your crutch on your back and go on your road. Lord, I pray that you will heal our sister and make her well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Heal our brother in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Touch him and make him well. Grant it, Lord. You are healed, brother. Go now. God, I pray for our brother that you will heal him and make him well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will grant this to him, Father, for your glory, Father. I ask it. God, I pray that you will heal our sister and make her well. Through Jesus Christ's name. God, I ask for the healing of our sister here, that she will be made well. Through Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Mom, yes. That's what to me. God can heal. Do you believe he could heal? If God, by his grace, will tell me what you've done, what your life is, would you believe then if he told you what you had been doing and about your conditions are and the way you've been acting and what you've been doing, you'll suddenly know the truth. Is that right? You didn't know your condition was tuberculosis. You're healed now. You ask the man, cause is gone from me. If he knows what's causing that, but that, that doesn't make you have tubercular. You go on your, for the pastor speaks, God, I pray that you heal our sister. May she go and be made well through Jesus' name. God, I pray that for our sister, that you will heal her through Jesus Christ's name. God, I bless our sister for healing her in Jesus Christ's name. Now, look, will will come sincere and believing now. While we are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I claim her healing. God be merciful to our brother through Jesus Christ. Brother Baxter speaks and leads songs, the great physician, and let it breathe on me for 10 minutes while Brother Bram continues to pray for those in the line. Blank spot on the tape. You know, you think that I'm just asking for blessings for the people. They are being healed. See, you may not see. Healing doesn't consist of excitement. Healing consists of power. See, I've seen many who is not emotion healing. You just thump and scream and cry at the demons. They won't move, but faith, they recognize. See, that's just what takes place, you see. 
watch the people, you see what I mean. Here recently, I was in a line with a lady come through calmly. In a moment, two of them was prayed for. One of them had a growth on her neck, and one of them had a stomach trouble. It wasn't any different type of praying when it came to tell to me to tell them about what their conditions was. Once in a while, we had the Holy Spirit stop the people and tell them what they've got, but I'm trying to get everyone prayed for while I'm here tonight. And this lady, she was uh, told to go home. She's going to get well with a big growth on her neck. And the other was told by the Baxter knows of it, and uh, she had a stomach trouble. Told her she's going to get well, go home and eat what she wanted. Well, that she tried to do. And for about six weeks, it was horrible. Everything she did, she'd warm it right up. And one morning, she was standing, washing the dishes, and she just felt something went over her cold. She didn't know what happened. Had happened in a few minute moments, she felt like crying, so she started weeping. Then she got real hungry, and she tried to eat a little piece of toast, and usually she just vomited it up, and hadn't come up. Then she ate some oats that was there at the table, and they were all right. And she drank a cup of coffee. It was all right. Then she sat down and ate a good hearty breakfast it was all right she was so happy she ran down to tell her neighbor woman the one who had a lump on her throat what had just happened and the neighbor woman was just screaming on top of her voice the lamp had just went off of her throat and now that was weeks later what had happened please believe me see if i can get our sister here here's why do you remember when daniel the prophet there's an angel followed him. How many knows that's true? The angel of God and Daniel prayed one time, I believe it was about 21 days for the angel could. Is that right, doctor? Is that right? But he believed. Now, what she, what had happened, a blessing had been pronounced upon those people. And when now that blessing, if I'm telling the truth, and if I'm telling the truth, which I don't think you have room to doubt, God is testifying of this. Just the same as you'd walk to a minister and be baptized down in the pool, your baptism is essential. You'd believe that you were baptized, wouldn't you? In Christian baptism, it wasn't the minister, but he was ordained to do so, see? But that's just what I was sent to pray for the sick. If you just believe, you watch what happens, it'll take place. It's got to, it'll be.